All right, so this video has been requested by a lot of people, um, especially lately, since I've came back to the game. A lot of people wanna know what settings I'm using now. So I'm just gonna be going over what I use. Um, typically, for most scenarios, I'll use Fortnite percent and then uh, eight horizontal sensitivity, which is about 50 centimeters per 360. It's just what's comfortable for me on a lot of scenarios. And for FOV, I tend to use a 103 Overwatch. However, for some scenarios, I'll increase it depending. If I play something like Tile Frenzy, you're obviously going to want higher FOV. And I also like Toggle Zoom ADS because I'll accidentally right-click a lot and then I rebind in my key so that my ADS doesn't get in the way. Um, for max frame rate, if you want to uncap your frame rate, you just set it to zero. I get anywhere from 500 to 800 depending on the scenario. And I do have health bars on for the scenarios that allow it. Especially target twitching, it just is nicer to see the health of a bot, what you leave it at. And I have my health bar scale at 1.7 because it works better on smaller targets. You can just see the health bar easier. And none of these other scenarios really matter. Um, this just makes it so every 24 hours it'll reset the workshop cache. So when you launch the game, it'll load the workshop. If you don't want it to load all the scenarios each day you open it, just make this number larger. Um, as for keybinds, I don't really change anything. The only thing I really change is the reset session. I rebinded it to Z, so it's easier for me to press it with my left hand. Um, but other than that, everything is default. I did rebind ADS though, so it's not on my mouse because I don't ADS at all in any scenarios. As for the default weapon settings, uh, make sure you hide the weapon and turn off hit, visible hit scan graphics. Any, everything else right here doesn't really matter. Uh, crosshair, I use the default plus.png. I do have a lot of extra crosshairs downloaded, but plus.png is the best crosshair for me. Um, as for any shoot sound, I don't really like using shoot sounds. Uh, I like getting feedback when I'm hitting the target, but not when I'm shooting. I used to use hit sounds a lot, or shoot sounds a lot, but I'm not really a big fan of it anymore. I don't have any actual hit markers, but I do have the hit sound of Body Shot 03. It's a default hit sound, so you should have it included within your game. And then for head hit sound, I'll add it if the gun requires it. Uh, it really just depends on the mode. Um, other than that, that's just the weapon settings that I use. For video, I just have everything on all low. Um, nothing really special here. So if you want to go ahead and copy that real quick, just pause the video. And then for visuals, I make sure you set decal time to zero. Essentially what that does is it'll remove any like bullet holes when you shoot. And for walls and floors, I like using pure color gray. However, sometimes I'll switch it up and I'll change it to concrete tiles and wood floors if I want it to look nicer. If I'm playing like target switching or tracking and I want the game to look cool. But for your static dots and scenarios like that, like tile frenzy, you're going to want something like pure color. It's just what works best for me. You can experiment for yourself. As for the sky color, this is uh, what Christmas is Cancelled uses. It looks really nice. Like a very like orange horizon color. It, it's really cool. And for the enemy colors, um, I'll change the head color depending on if I'm playing like target switching or something to like pink. But for Pokeball and all those static scenarios, I have just all black so that it, it's just one solid color. And then if you put the roughness all the way and the full bright all the way, it'll be like just pitch black. It's a lot easier to spot on your monitor. Just make sure you click override head and override body color. For team colors, it does not matter at all. Um, For my sound, it's just 0.85 volume. And the kill confirm, this is like a big setting. This is one of the sounds from TMAX sound pack, which I will leave a link to down in the description. Uh, it's just a sound pack, which basically has like hundreds of sounds that you can use for Kovacs. As you can see, I have so many now. Um, but this one sounds really nice. It has a nice like reverb effect after you get a kill. And it just makes the game feel more satisfying. And then this is one thing I get asked a lot is how do you change the color of the UI? I do like to hide a lot of the UI on my screen because it just removes visual clutter and allows me to focus better. Um, you can experiment for yourself and see what you like having on your screen. A lot of people like having session stats on so you can see your kills per second. But that honestly distracts me a lot of the time, so I turn it off. Um, but for my palette colors, the primary color is like the color of the buttons and whatnot. So I just make that black. The secondary color is like the background color and the color behind the buttons. Make it gray. And these are the only ones you really need to change. It's for health bars, I do make my health bars black. I think it looks better that way so that it matches my enemy color, but you can just use whatever feels best for you. And I, uh, for 
everything else it's pretty much just default and then for my in-game playlist i guess i can show you i have about like 30 different playlists downloaded um uh, but yeah and um yeah that's pretty much it for kovac settings you can tick this box if you want to see the friends leaderboard and see what your friends have on the scenario um but yeah i'm going to go over the nvidia settings now all right so for my nvidia settings i actually just followed a guide for pretty much all of it the first thing you're going to want to do is click use my pref preference emphasizing to set it to performance and then tick that back and as for managed 3d settings these are the settings that really matter um, I'm just going to slowly scroll down. I'm not going to just like discuss each one. Just make sure you just copy it and make sure basically everything's on performance and that you turn on low latency mode. And that's basically it. You can turn low latency mode on ultra, but some people experience screen tearing. I just left it on on. Um, but if you know anything about that, let me know in the comments down below. For my resolution, I have 240 hertz and also just make sure you use NVIDIA color settings. It'll make the colors on your monitor look better. For desktop color settings, um i have it on using video settings it doesn't really matter because i don't change the default and digital vibrance i used to play with digital vibrance like on pretty high when i played counter-strike and other games but to be honest it just makes the colors look so inaccurate when i'm watching stuff like youtube i'm not a fan of it anymore um yeah that's basically like all the settings you need to change um for scaling it doesn't really matter just whatever you need for your game and those are the NVIDIA control panel settings that I use. Now I'm going to go over the monitor settings. All right, so the monitor that I use is the BenQ XL2546. And if you do have the BenQ XL2546 and you want to go and use the DIAC feature, I highly suggest you download this thing called Blurbuster Strobe Utility. I'll leave a link to it down in the description below. Basically, what it does is it allows you to eliminate the ghosting that DIAC causes as well as increase the brightness of your screen. You can tweak the settings to see what works best on your panel. Basically, you just want the most clear image of the UFO. And if you do have um, the 2546, I'd highly suggest you take a look at this. Um, it doesn't really work for any other monitors, but yeah. All right, so the final thing I'm gonna talk about in this video is the version of Windows I'm running. Um, I'm actually running uh, this thing called Revy OS, which is basically a more optimized Windows ISO. So if you go ahead and uh, pull up revy.cc in your web browser, you can see what it is. Basically, it's ba a tweaked version of Windows 10 Pro. I've suggested it to a lot of people as well. People like Christmas is canceled, and uh, I was actually told to use it by a member of UKM named uh, Ellie, and it, has made my windows run so much better and my performance in game is a lot better there's no like stuttering or anything anymore for basically anything and the mouse input is a like a million times better and so if you go ahead and click on download you can download the one that's like best for you you probably want the 2004 s 1.0 i downloaded the 1709 version but that's the older version of windows 10 it just depends on what games you play because you know this uh, doesn't work with Xbox Game Pass. If you need Xbox Game Pass, make sure you grab this one. Um, but it's slightly larger and has a little worse performance than 1709, but it really is not noticeable. You can see like the change log and everything. You can go ahead and download it as well. So once you download and install RevOS, it's basically just like reinstalling Windows. There's a bunch of guides here, and you're gonna want to follow like a lot of these guides. Tweak your BIOS for the best settings. Make sure you install the driver, but do a clean install of it. And um, you can just follow all these tweaks and guides. This is the NVIDIA control panel guide that I followed for my settings. And if you have AMD, there's separate guides for that. And basically it'll completely like reduce your system latency. It makes everything a lot easier. 
course, it's possible to do all of this without installing RevOS, but this just makes it so much easier and it's free. And there's a Discord server you can join if you ever need help with it. And yeah, this has just been uh, one of the tweaks I did for my computer and I thought I'd go over it if I got any questions about it.